My name is Sean Wagner. I am the head of Central Pennsylvania Investigators. Uh, Charlie Larson. I'm with the Catskill Appalachian Research Collective. Pam Shiver, member of CPI. Jim Thorpe, also a member of CPI. My name's Mike. I'm from uh, Westchester County, New York. Where are we right now, Mike? We're in um, Bald Eagle State Forest in uh, Langadon, PA. Okay. So why don't you guys just, just you guys were just BSing about Bigfoot, just talk, you don't, you don't need to face me, just talk amongst each other. Talk about a Bigfoot story or your your experience in the woods, uh, Mike, that one time, or Pam. What, what's a, what's something that made you guys, what's the weirdest thing that's happened to, uh, to any of you in the, in the woods? Well, we had gone on, Jim and I had gone on an investigation with Sean in Michelle. Michelle, sorry. Michelle, yeah. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I know it doesn't look right for the spelling, but. <laughs> <laughs> took, us, took us on our first Bigfoot experience. What happened? Um, well, it was before two, and Sean was whooping, and then he goes, Anybody else want to try? Said, All right, I'll try. So I did, and I, in the distance, very far distance, you could hear a whoop back. You could hear what? You could hear something calling back. Oh, okay. It was pretty cool. That kind of... So was this at night, in the middle of the night? It was before yeah. 2 a.m., yeah. 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 And Jim, have you had anything other than that? Basically, that, that was it. Uh, this is our third yeah. time out, and uh, looking forward to it. Actually. Great. And uh, Mike, I think you said you had a you had an experience or something that was a little odd. Um, a couple of years ago, I was um, I got up really early. I did a uh, hike um, on a section of the Appalachian Trail that, that gets through uh, Terrence Fence Scott State Park in Southern Maryland, Dutchess County. And it was about um, eight eight thirty a.m. I remember I had uh, I stopped at like a little clearing. It was meant to be you know, sort of the backpacking site, the little campsite. And I was sitting, I was sitting by the fire pit, and I had my backpack open, and I remember I was reaching in, and then to the uh, left of me, I just heard that distinct wood hitting wood, sound, wood mm -hmm. sound, you know, like a knock. Yeah. And um, I, I remember, like, it was, I, I'm much, yeah, I'm not saying, you know, uh, I'm not saying, like, what it is or what it isn't, but whatever it was was so close to me. I kind of felt like the vibration of the sound would go through me. Wow. wow. And That's I remember cool. I froze, and I was just like, yeah. Whoa. That's yeah. very cool. That's neat. What That's was that? Really cool. Did I feel that? Yeah, I think so too. And you were by yourself at the time? I was by myself. And um, I remember when I looked up the map, when I looked up the map, it came from, so like I, I was facing the fire pit this way, and it came from this way over here. I looked, when I looked up the map, when I looked up the map, um, it was just all, all woods that area. You know, there was, you know, there was a, a, a ridge line, ridge line a little far back, but it was all woods over there, you know? Um, it was that way. The way I came from there was there. Um, that was the way I came from. And um, I don't think, you know, when, when, when I had pulled it that way, you know, maybe about like a quarter mile, half mile or so, you, you saw I would have um, ran into the road. But the direction it came from, though, was all woods. So, again, I, I'm not saying, you know, right. Right. it was or wasn't a Bigfoot, but, promising. you know, that's what I, yeah, yeah that's what I experienced. Yeah. That's cool. Sean, Charlie, any, any oddities? Sean, you have the you have the cool one at Salt uh, Salt Fork. I actually have a couple then. Well, dish. Uh, <laughs> I will be glad to. At Salt Fork, I uh, I was on an expedition. Now Salt Fork State Park is where? Yeah, I'm sorry. Salt Fork State Park is in Ohio. Okay. Uh, I believe southeastern Ohio, if I recall correctly. You are correct. Uh, what? You are correct. Ah, thank you. Um. We were staying at the primitive campground, and we were fortunate that it was like a Sunday night, so there was no one, no one there really. And uh, I did an isolation, and I, and I actually broadcasted it live as well. All was one person watching it. <laughs> That's exactly right. There, <laughs> like my videos, usually I have a ton of views. One person. Um, <laughs> <laughs> 
Exactly. Charlie's great. One of my uh, biggest fans. Absolutely. One of my video's biggest fans. So what happened? Back, back to the story? All right. Um, well, anyway, I was going along. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> and uh, all of a sudden, I heard a knock. And I stopped and said something like, well, that's, that was interesting. I bet it was him. Me? I was in New Jersey. I know. I bet it was you. And, and you, had a, you had a second one? Yeah. Also, it's hard to tell what that for certain what it was. It just was a knocking sound that came from the woods, in all for certain, in all honesty. Um, and the other one uh, was in the show. Uh, I was there when, for your story, but also on another one, I uh, before I was able to roll the camera, and I did say this on the video, we had uh, a whooping sound occurred, or several occurred, and I had trouble getting the camera set up, and I uh, used a choice word or two. And that was it. <laughs> Once uh, the camera was set up, uh, nothing. Not a sound in the world. Of course. That's how it nice. usually is. Yeah. Yep. Like paranormal. Yeah. But, wow. Now, what's, uh, what's everybody's take on um, Sasquatch or Bigfoot? Um, is it an ape? Is it a, is it a mammal? Is it a primate? Is it a, a, a paranormal? There are no wrong or answers. You know? I'm, I'm just curious I'm about everybody's say personal mammal. philosophy. Yeah, I'm just saying undiscovered primate flesh and blood yeah organic organic migrating. I agree. yeah mi migratory definitely migratory yeah. i think i think they're both well i think you know i think they, they they migrate but i think they're they sometimes they'll leave like a maybe like one or two back to right kind of yeah keep the territory you know, guard the territory type thing and then you know what i mean and then have you know the family members family units come in you know, like maybe see the alpha male or you know, one of the males back and the uh, female to mate. It's actually a show. There was a show on TV. Where they Speak up a little bit, Jim. Just say there, there was a show on TV where they uncovered large humans. Uh, I forget what dates. Was that Wisconsin? I heard something about Wisconsin. Oh, some kind of strange giant skeleton. Yeah, giant yeah. skeleton. Oh, supposedly the government took them or something like that? Probably. But uh, also Flips. there is on the same token they they found small dwarfs to be politically correct. And you had mentioned, Jim, we were talking earlier today. Uh, you mentioned something about um, supernatural, like with with a cemetery. Uh, you think there's some sort of correlation with <laughs> with, well, with um, wooded cemeteries or ancient cemeteries and Sasquatch sightings? Do you think there's a, 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 there's a there relationship? There might be because he said he was near cemetery. Um, it's one of for being haunted, paranormal experiences, but, right. um, but there's also Bigfoot yes. activity there. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, some people claim there's like migratory Sasquatch-like creatures that, uh, that have been uh, spotted before in the past. So it, it's possible. Right, and this is a, a pioneer cemetery, like a, an abandoned cemetery, or is it in a... a I, would have, I would have to look it up, I would have to look it up. Yeah. Though. But I, 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 think, I think it was a fairly old cemetery, though. Right, because I, I think there's some places in, in Ohio too, right, where they've got, or Tennessee, where there's some, some, some cemeteries that are located next to a park and they've had a lot of uh, uh, sightings. How old do you think these uh, these creatures live, Pam? Uh, how well, long do you think they live? That's, I would that's a hard that. question. Right? Yeah. I mean, do you think they're like humans? Do you think they live 60, 70 years old, depending on... At least that, that, I would think longer, I, though. Yeah? Yeah. But they're not actually eating some of the stuff we eat. Right. They're even cleaner. Right. Yeah, exactly. And maybe the family structure is one or two offspring? Yeah, a not smaller five family or six structure. and seven, yeah. Although, <coughs> with bigger dogs, though, sometimes they don't live as long as smaller dogs because of their... The different right. problems they have with their bodies right. and you know the digestive system. So maybe it is. Yeah, but with like the digestive 50, 50, system, though, they're eating dogs, we know healthier. Yeah. Yeah. We don't know nothing about it. No, you don't. Yeah. So I'd say they live longer than. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I said they live longer than five minutes before they're eating. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them. Well, people yeah. are living to be 100 years old now, so. Yeah. I would think yeah. 50 to 60 years tops for some reason. Um, yeah, well, I don't think much longer than that. How old do elephants live? Because that's a pretty big mammal. Elephants are 70? 70? That sounds about right. Or bear, how old do bear live for? In gorillas. Well, well depends on my house. Yeah. 
And Mike, why do you think uh, the remains are so difficult to find? Yeah, that's the thing I was going to... Yeah, well, I mean, what do you think? What do you, what's your take on that, Mike? You, you know, anybody? Maybe it has something to do with the, the their family members they could doing put them something in a burial with them. Pit, like Native Americans? I think, um, I think they intended. I think three possibilities. Um, one possibility, as soon as they're dead, I think it's conceivable that other, other squatches bury them. Mm -hmm. um, the second one, too, was when, um, especially when, like, pre pre animals of predatory nature die or get, you know, or get injured or are dying, they hide. They, they, they uh, you know, right. apex they, predators. They retreat. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah, yeah they, they retreat, you know, but they find somewhere to cover and they die. Um, the other thing, too, is if you, like, you look at any carcass, any carcass that out in the woods, when something dies, the other animals and the, and the elements, and the elements get to it. There's no trace of it after like, right. you know, anywhere from like five to fourteen days tops. Mm -hmm. And the other thing too is, um, I think, I do think there's a correlation, especially with territorial sasquatches, between um, with them and like swamps and boggy areas. You know, a lot of like, you know, especially like you know, deep deep in, in those swampy and boggy areas, they're pretty much physically impossible for humans to get to. You know, you know? for squatch, if they're walking through there, they're up to like their waist or their chest in water. That's over our heads. Right. You know, that's over our heads, and it's like you know, swampy, marshy, body water. You know, a person probably gets stuck trying to go trying to. Uh, and that, that actually brings up a great point. Is a couple of years ago, in, I think it was North Carolina, uh, that two-year-old boy went missing, mm. and he was found in a bog where he wouldn't have been able to walk into it. He was on a knoll in a bog. No way. And he was found alive after two nights in the woods. He said he hung out with a bear for two days. Yeah. yeah. So I think, like, I, I think you're right. I think they, they, they purposely know how to navigate places that are inhospitable. We can't get to. And that also proves they're not they're people. Smart. No, they don't harm people. Or at least I think if, if they're threatened, they will harm. Right. But if they're if there's someone the innocent, if it's something innocent or that needs help, they probably will. I mean, like, this is all speculation, but they'll probably right. lend a hand more than right. go for the kill, you know? It's like well, the, the, the different countries that have like uh yeti hmm? they they should be there supposedly. but it could be again if they're right yeah in russia they also i guess that that, that that one was pretty that yeah. was brutal now what's your wow. take on if that's the case what's your take on uh, david politis's missing 411 where there claims to be a lot of abductions by so-called bigfoot do you do you put any credence in any of that there's some interesting cases. I remember there's one case of that that's missing, about this boy that went missing, and um, a couple of days later they supposedly found like his shoes and his clothes neatly, like you know, they found his shoes and his clothes neatly, you know, placed in this area, but it was several miles away from where the kid went missing, and they crossed like this really treacherous train across a couple like ridges and stuff like that, and they're saying like there's no way like a six, seven year old kid could have covered that much ground, especially right. around that treacherous and that short in that short of time. So, I mean, you know, it's possible, yeah, you know, there's like, you know, some mm -hmm. sick weirdo who's abducting kids and doing that, but, um, right. you know, it's definitely not conceivable to say that, you know, it is a right. Pam, you sound like you, you look like you had something to add to that, as far as, uh, the, 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 the missing, like, I guess you guys had some experience with, uh, somebody late night at a park somewhere, it, it may have been a human, but somebody wandering around in the dark. No, that was when we were doing the investigation at Machow. Michow. Michow. What happened? You want to? Well, it was just really. We were weird. parked at a sign, you know, that told where we were at, basically, and there was an opening there, and uh, we were kind of packing up to leave, and at that time, about two in the morning, a car pulled in to look okay. at the sign. Yeah. At pulled two in the morning. Pulled in behind us, kind of behind us. Walked over, got out, walked over to the sign. It's almost two o'clock in the morning. In the middle of nowhere. Top you, of the mountain. You guys were camped by yourselves? We were Sean. Sean. Oh, okay. Sean was but it was wilderness camping? Oh, yeah. Well, was, we really weren't camping. We weren't camping. No, we just we went we to just went investigate. Yeah. Yeah. And then leave. But it was just it weird was, that they yeah. pulled in behind us like... I'm more worried about the humans. Right, right so you think and maybe a lot of these abductions have to be... Kidnapping. I think yep. a lot of them are. It's just, it just seems a little. And uh, what do you? What's the plans for tonight? The game plan, real quick. We'll just uh, snap to. Um, what are we going to do tonight? Here at the park. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, 
Did you want to investigation in? Right. Yeah. Well, the, you know, some of the trails, you know, maybe just some of the easier terrain, maybe go around with the clear and, and the parabolic, and maybe do some, you know, do some wood knocks and stuff like that. But I think, you know, I think in the morning we should head over to that boggy area and maybe just check out. In the wee hours. Wee hours, yeah. And I, I see the, the wind is dying down. Do you think we got a chance of maybe getting something up in the air there, Jim? Uh, I could probably get the little one up. Oh. That'd be cool. Excellent. Yeah, we're cool. I think that's everything.